Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to give it a few more minutes here as the attendees are starting to join. Um, Got a few more individuals still joining. I'm going to give it a few more seconds and then we will start it off. All right. Uh, it's like everybody, uh, I have not seen the number grow here for a few seconds. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today, September 16th, Meridian M0 Manage Personnel Management Kiosk presentation webinar. Uh, my name is Josh, I'm software support engineer here, uh, M0 Manage platform, and specifically with the uh, personnel management kiosk. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. We're super glad to have you here. Um, we're gonna take this time today to go over the product, go over, um, the kiosk itself and what M0 Manage, uh, the cloud software and the, the cloud platform can do for you uh, in regards to the personnel management kiosk. So again, my name is Josh. Uh, I'm going to go through some slides here. We're going to talk about the product, talk about the software, and then at the end, we have a little question and answer session. All right. So what is the personnel management kiosk? Uh, personnel management kiosk is a Temperature taking device. This device uh, will essentially, at bare bones, take the temperature of an individual, uh, record that event, and then keep a log of that event. Uh, you are able to use a facial recognition database to build a database of employees. Uh, if you're using this in an educational facility, uh, your students, teachers, staff, groundskeepers, maintenance crew, whomever you wish to enroll um, in this, uh, in, the, in the program or in the uh, database is able to have their face and their information uh, stored and then called up upon facial recognition. So on the screen here, you can see a couple of different options for the kiosk, some hardware configurations. The device does come on a pedestal. Um, this pedestal is roughly your average uh, you know, adult height. I'm just at six feet and I'm able to uh, use it pretty regularly and pretty comfortably without having to stoop or, or anything like that. Um, we do offer a child height for the kiosk. So child height, if you're a educational facility dealing with you know, preschoolers or um, kindergartners or even up through the, you know, the grade schools and elementary school, uh, this is a, a great device. This will stop the individual who's scanning from having to get on a stool or you know, jump around and, and fight for a good reading or a good temperature reading or facial recognition reading. Uh, one note on this child height uh, version of the kiosk, uh, I have spoken with several uh, senior living center uh, facilities. A couple of customers have senior living centers. Um, they have found and they've reported to me that the child height uh, kiosk is perfect for individuals who are using mobility scooters or wheelchairs or for the elderly population who suffered some decline in their height due to well, getting older. Everybody gets old, we, we change. So uh, that child height uh, kiosk is, is definitely uh, has more than just its uses for um, children or for those who are uh, vertically challenged. A uh, pedestal with LED, uh, this model is a little newer uh, on the scene. It does feature an additional LED, as you can see here, at the, the neck of the kiosk where the, the head unit attaches. Here there is another illumination device, an LED that will you know, scan green. When a good scan occurs, it will illuminate green. Uh, if there's an over threshold, that will illuminate red. Uh, of course, you can change that. Um, if privacy is a concern, you do not have to have a uh, color-coded illumination. You can turn that off to what we call monochrome. Uh, if you want a handy dandy countertop model, if this is something you plan on moving about, if you want to set it up at the front with the receptionist 
or if you just want to take it from room to room to do, to do scanning and temperatures and onboarding personnel, uh, that countertop is handy, as well as a, a wall-mounted version. So it will actually come with a bracket for you to be able to mount it to the wall for hands-free operation. So as I talked about the kiosk and what it is actually designed for, the temperature taking, uh, the recording and logging of temperatures along with either a uh, personnel record set or just if you're using these devices, what we call guest or stranger mode, it will record any face or event um, as you as the individual walks up to it and scans into it. So why M0 Manage? What is M0 Manage? M0 Manage is Meridian's cloud-based platform. It is one centralized location. It is one central database is one tool, it is one monitoring software, it is a portal that allows you to control and maintain these devices. Let's say you have a, uh, let's say you're a, a grocery store, let's say you're a grocery store and you have uh, three or four different locations in a town. Well, if there, if you're in a large metropolitan area, and you know, we're here in North Carolina, let's say you've probably heard of Charlotte. You're in Charlotte, Charlotte's a huge city, the entire county of Mecklenburg is basically the city of Charlotte. It's, it's so big, it's its own county in the state of North Carolina here where Meridian's based at. I, as an IT guy, if I was tasked with this, I would not look forward to having to drive to three different locations. And let's say each location has five, six, seven, eight different kiosks. So that's three trips in the car I have to make at eight record sets I have to update. I'm doing this 24 times when with M0 Manage, I can make all these changes remotely and I can make it once and send it down to all those connected devices. So it's really about allowing you to gain control over multiple devices in your network or in your, in your domain or your realm. So it's very, very useful tool if you have two, three, or even if you just want to be able to pull reports remotely from a singular device in your network. If you have one device, there's really nothing um, the M0 Manage can't do that you wouldn't have to do without having to take the head unit apart, get a thumb drive, contact IT. It takes a lot of that hands-on uh, interaction with the hardware after initial setup away. It just allows you to, to control these remotely. So what can it do? So it, as I mentioned before, with the settings updates and, and being able to group and, and change uh, features and settings on these devices, it gives you one centralized location to manage your employees, to manage that record set of what we call onboarded individuals. So you can have a 10,000 person employee organization and very easily be able to add all those employees with their name, employee number, badge number, however you, you refer to it within your organization, their face, an email address, and to be able to build that record set on one location on the web using you know, HTML5 and being able to just upload this information with a very simple, easy to use graphical user interface, click, drag, drop, type, save, boom, you've built that record set. Every kiosk you deploy in your network under this uh, M0 managed platform would then be able to access this database, would then be able to synchronize across your entire organization the same information. Uh, the logging of temperatures, of course, now with, you know, with COVID-19 and then the concern for everyone's health and, and the concern for um, elevated temperatures, it's a great screening tool. It's also a great tool to keep a log um, if your organization does require an audit to ensure that if you want to open up your business, if you want to open up your school and you want to get back to normalcy, as close to normalcy as we can, um, this device and this integration with the M0 Manage platform allows you to keep that record set, to export it as a CSV, to control that data, or just click and scroll and, and, and look through that information, type and search. It's all right there one centralized location. Uh, there is a dashboard where you can watch scans come through within seconds after 
occurring on the device. Um, like I mentioned before, building reports, uh, as well as receiving email alerts uh, when an individual scans at a kiosk and they have exceeded a, a temperature threshold. Um, that temperature threshold comes here uh, from the factory at about 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit uh, per CDC uh, recommendations. So I mentioned again about changing in-app settings and configuring these devices, uh, the dashboard where you can see the scans come through, uh, grouping kiosks, changing permissions. Um, also, uh, another, another key feature I want to focus on here, um, privacy is a concern. Privacy is important. Uh, your data, your employees' data, that sensitive data. Uh, I don't want my credit card or personal cell phone number out there on the internet uh, any more than you do. <laughs> I, I definitely understand. Uh, the importance of having that privacy. If you're concerned about the physical device, um, let's say you have it in a, uh, a front lobby somewhere, if you're afraid, God forbid, someone come in and, and snatch it out of your lobby and run out the door, um, they better be pretty big to, to pull that stand out and run off with it. But there is that ability uh, for you to turn off the local device storage. Uh, and what I mean by that is there's a gigabyte of internal storage on the head unit. As you scan, as those records are accumulated, um, that gigabyte fills up. Once it has reached a gig, uh, a gigabyte of storage, it starts to revolve. So what does that mean? That means your oldest scans are removed and replaced with your newest scan. So it's just a revolving door uh, of scans. What you can do is you can toggle the device to erase or not keep those local scans and just send that information to the cloud. So if privacy over the physical device and having that information on a tablet where, where our cloud is secured, both through your password and through intrusion attempts, where, where our data centers and our cloud information is secure, if you're worried about the physical device, uh, there is a way to make it run essentially in a phone home mode where it would just, oh, James Smith scanned in, oh, Josh scanned in, doesn't save on the device, hits the cloud, it's safe, it's secure. Of course, don't share your password and it's, it's fine. Um, we talked a little bit about the images, the facial, or the facial database on the device. The biggest tip I could give you, if you're already a customer, um, if you're getting ready to buy, if you just purchased, you haven't used it, and you just you wanted to attend this webinar um, to kind of get a little bit of a, a spiel about it, the biggest piece of advice I could give you is to look at this guy right here. This is the ideal format for the picture. Um, if you ever had a passport made, if you've ever looked at your driver's license photo, I, I felt some of you cringe right there when I mentioned that. Um, but no, driver's license photo, all, all be they, uh, they get a bad rap for looking bad. Uh, that format is pretty much um, the, the format you're looking for um, when it comes to a good profile picture. I'll call it a profile picture for the employees. The better the photo that you can feed the facial database algorithm, the more accurate and the quicker your facial recognition scans are going to be. And I'll say it again for the people in the back, the better profile photo that we can feed the facial data um, algorithm, the better experience you're gonna have. So if we look at the example here, I can see this guy's neck. I got a chin happening. I can see the ears. I can see between the ears. I can see the top of the head. Any of my photography nuts out there are gonna know when I say rule of thirds. If you look at the photo, you see it's in this grid photo. It's in this grid pattern on the photo, these little white lines here. One, two, three by one, two, three. Thirds going this way, thirds going this way. The nose is centered in the center. The eyes fall between these two quadrants or well, whatever nine is, it's been a couple years since I was in math class. Uh, <laughs> so in this part of the grid on this side here, we see the nine, uh, the, the nine segments. The eyes are just falling outside of block four and six. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these two blocks with the eyes, 
the face doesn't have to be as symmetrical as this. We're not we're not looking for uh, you know perfect symmetry, but following this rule of thirds to where the lower half I got the chin and the neck, the eyes, the nose, the cheeks, this guy's dimples here and the ears fall in the middle of the third, and then the top third would would capture the forehead and the head. Big thing. Guys with longer hair and the ladies with bangs, it will be better if the side sweat bangs or the you know, the the, um, the bangs coming straight down the face that you know kind of come down like this, either sweeping those off to the side so they're not obscuring the forehead, or to pull them back with the use of a um, a headband or or something like a bandana or something like that, just to kind of get the or hair clips just to get it out of the face. Uh, we want to see the forehead, we want to see those points, the eyebrows for facial recognition. Same thing goes when it comes time to scan in with the kiosk. The less obstructions of the face, the better. All right, so picture formats. JPEG or PNG, portable network graphic, some of the more common photograph uh, encapsulation processes, the different types of photographs out there, pretty common, JPEGs, PNGs. Specifically, when it comes to doing a bulk upload of the personnel photos, the image must be named the employee ID. So if you're going to do a badge number, you're going to do an employee number, you're just going to make something up on the spot, that's fine. Whatever records you have for James Smith, personnel ID, one, two, three, four. This picture better be named one, two, three, four dot JPEG or dot PNG. And of course, you have issues with bulk upload, and as it comes down to it, our support team is more than happy uh, to assist you to take a look at that uh, and, to, and to get those um, issues fixed. File size, no more than 500 um, kilobytes. Let's keep it under that. There's plenty of uh, compression tools out there, Photoshop, free image processors like GIMP, um, or even Microsoft Photos or Paint 3D. They're, they're ways for you to to compress that image um, as well as the size of the image we find that about 800 pixels wide by about 12 or 1300 pixels tall is pretty good it's pretty good photo um, as long as you meet these requirements where, where i mentioned the rules of thirds before you're going to have a lot better results you're going to have a lot easier time um, no tilting of the face. Some of these Hollywood glamour shots out here are not going to work. If your head's tilted, if you're if you're you know you're you're doing the whole Jack Russell Terrier looking to the side, you know cocking your head to the side, uh, we want on level with the camera lens. If you're using a fancy digital single lens reflex, or you're using your computer's webcam to take these photographs, eyes level with the lens of the camera, looking straight on, looking straight forward. No, no twisting, no turning, no tilting. Uh, it will not give you good reads. The background. If you're going to be taking these photographs from scratch and you're getting ready to onboard your employees, um, the cleaner, the plainer, the background, the better. Um, patterns. You know, you might have some beautiful paisley print wallpaper in your office. It will confuse. Beyond a doubt, it will. It will just wreak havoc with the facial data recognition. Um, it just does not like patterns, stripes, um, polka dots, doesn't matter. If you can find a plain background, white, light gray, um, that industrial yellow we see um, in, in many uh, schools and, and other you know, government or public institutions, uh, that's going to be your best bet is just have the cleanest, unadulterated profile photo. And last but not least, no more than 20,000 faces at a time can be recognized. Uh, that seems to be about the cap of the image processing software, um, as well as the uh, storage capacity on the device. If you're new to the software, um, you're getting ready to buy, you're thinking about purchasing, I urge you to go to the website, meridiankiosks.com. Uh, you'll see a, you'll see a web, a web link at the top. That will provides you with the PMK homepage. Under there, there's FAQs, which is stands for Frequently Asked Questions. There are video resources, as outlined here. Um, there are knowledge-based articles. There's, there's a book 
about the device, the platform, how to use it. One thing I do, if I am a big electronics guy, I'm a big techie, anytime I order something new, uh, before it's even shipped, I'm downloading that manual, I'm looking at it. Um, I would definitely advise that. Um, look at these free resources, watch these videos, look at, check out these documents, uh, play around with it like you've got the unit and you've been using it, and you will just, you'll find it just goes hand in hand. You're just able to, to get up and get started and you have a much better experience. Um, if you can't, if, you're, if you don't want to do that, if you're still leery about that, uh, once you do get signed up, the support team is more than happy to help you with that. So there's a couple of portals. We're going to talk about the different portals for this. So M0 Manage, uh, there's, there's two portals. There's the Manage Server and there's the Manage View. Manage Server is real quick. This is where you add the devices. This is where you set up the email alerts. Um, this is where you can change view user permissions. If you you don't want you know I, you don't want James Smith in your organization to see the lunchroom kiosk, you, you click a box, he can't see them anymore. He can't interact with them. Uh, this is more for the administrator. This is more for the technical user. Um, this is more for setup. The uh, the next portal here. The personnel.meridiankiosk.com, or, or as we refer to, or refer to as the uh, M0 Manage View. This is where 90, 95% of your interaction with, with M0, the platform, the cloud, uh, is going to occur. This is where the dashboard lives. That dashboard I mentioned uh, a couple slides back, uh, where you can watch the scans come through in real time. That's M0 Manage View. Uh, being able to search and pull entry reports, export entry reports uh, to a CSV file. If you've got some, some Excel ninjas that just love to use Excel and love database and management, you can get this information in a CSV and you can give it to these individuals in your organization. And the possibilities are endless what they can do with that data. They can manage the reports. You can really export this raw data search it, control it, and, and make it yours, own it. Uh, you'll edit settings here, customization of the, the name of the kiosk where it displays the, the company name. For our current users, they've probably seen in the, in the settings, please set a company name. This is where you set that company name. This is where you can brand it. Uh, you can put your logo on the splash screen. So as your users, employees, or guests come up, you, you get that personalization touch. You can, you can really make it yours. Um, this is where you also will do the bulk uploads, or if you've got 10 people in your organization and you don't want to sit there and have to do them in a big bulk upload, you get the ability to onboard these personnel or these employees through the personnel employee section. Uh, this allows you to build that record set for your facial scans. Um, I know I talked a lot about facial scans. Don't worry, if you don't want to use the facial scan, um, the facial recognition algorithm, you can run the, the device, as I mentioned before, in a guest or a stranger mode. This would essentially capture all of the um, interactions with it. Someone walks up to the, the kiosk to get their temperature taken, scans them, says normal temperature, and then it will snap, capture that result. You can view it here in, live, in real time. You can view it live. You can see, oh, okay, I have a guest that just checked in. They've got a good temperature. Um, same thing if someone walks up and they get an abnormal temperature, you can be alerted via email, um, or if you're using uh, Google Chrome as your browser and you're logged in, you can actually get desktop notifications um, using um, the uh, Google Chrome uh, built-in notifications. Uh, we'll have to answer some questions about that if you're curious. Uh, Google Chrome notifications. They should be on by default. You might get a, a prompt asking you if you'll allow uh, those notifications when you log in. If you have any questions about that, once you get set up on the device, once you get set up on the platform and you're using the device, uh, you can feel free to reach out to us at support. Or if you uh, look up how to turn on the Google Chrome notifications for websites, uh, that's one of the second or third hits on Google if you're, if you're looking up how to do that on your own. So you've bought, the, uh, you've bought the device, you've got the software, you're just, you just need a little extra help. You just need a little extra help setting it up. Uh, that's where we do offer an onboarding support package. 
So onboarding package is an hour with a member of our support team, one of our dedicated specialists. Uh, they will work with you to get the device added. Um, they will work with you on setting up the CSV uh, file for doing a bulk import, um, double checking, you know, hey, did, the, did, I, did I set my CSV up? We'll take a look at it. Uh, we'll walk through very much how I'm going through the system with you right now in this webinar. You, you would be paying for that hour of one-on-one -on -one time to ask questions, go through it, test it, get some tips, some tricks, and just ultimately sit down with someone who works on these, uses these every single day, and get that custom personal touch. It's uh, Most people don't need the full hour, but if you do, it's there for you, um, and it can be very beneficial. Also, moving forward, we've had some um, questions or some current concerns about after hour support. We are launching additional support packages, both for the PMK hardware and for the integration with M0 Manage. Currently, right now, um, those have not been fully released, uh, but they will be available. Both uh, if you have a relationship with a reseller, one of our certified resellers, uh, if they're able to offer you those support packages, uh, you have that relationship established with them, feel free to go ahead and reach out to them. Uh, if not, we here at Meridian would be more than happy um, to assist you if you do need additional support packages uh, for your organization, for your devices, or if you're just curious about getting some onboarding after the fact and, and getting that hour to sit down and um, work with a member of our team, Mono y Mono. So this is the question section. As you can tell, I'm slowly losing my voice thanks to the change in the weather here in Central North Carolina. So I'm going to mute myself for a couple seconds, uh, let some of these questions come in, take a sip of water, and then I'm going to start going through these questions with you guys. So go ahead and start to submit. All right, so we got some uh, questions coming through here already. Perfect. All right, so let me see if I can make this bigger. How is the software shipped? Is it downloaded or physical? So if uh, referring to the M0 managed software, it's all cloud-based. So you actually will purchase a license. Um, that li Upon purchase and processing of that license and that payment, you will be given uh, credentials, you'll be given access to the software, um, covering software updates on the PMKs, the physical hardware unit themselves. Uh, you are able to download that at any time. Those downloads as of now are for free um, for users. So you can, you can log in if you have any issues or you need questions on um, how to get that download, just feel free to reach out to um, pmkhelp at m0.com. We do have a help desk ticketing system. You can open a ticket online or you can check out the FAQ section and the resources there for um, downloads searching the knowledge base. Let's see, can we integrate with our door locks with an output? So there is a, there's two models. I mentioned the LED model. The LED model um, with the LED stand has an integrated relay with it. Um, the regular traditional child and, and um, adult height kiosk, wall mount kiosk, they have a dry contact relay, uh, which in some cases, depending on your access controls, um, what, what, what format you're using, um, there is the ability for it to interact with some of those access control units. However, there is a, a separate board that is required. Um, if you're curious about that, reach out to us, um, I'll support or raise a ticket and then we can definitely work with you and or possibly your access control um, company to, to see what is needed to get that fully integrated. Um, oh, and, and still on that same note, Robert, um, the Wigand uh, sending data bits. Uh, there is a Wigand terminal for transmission and receiving um, of, of data bits for uh, badge card readers. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty big rabbit hole um, to go down so if you're curious about that, feel free to reach out to us. Um, 
either through a help desk ticket or PMK help. Can I do software for more updates to manage kiosks from M0? Um, so yes, the uh, ability to push down a software package update is slated for the next major platform update. Um, so we do regular maintenance and then we do features. So the next major feature, that is part of that. There's a, there's a bunch of great information about that. Actually, next week's webinar, I plan on speaking uh, to a lot of these upcoming features, um, as well as there will be an email blast when those features are available. Um, so right now, you still have to do it over the network or you have to do it via USB, um, but that update is waiting in the wings. See, are the device pictures taken with the same device or pictures can be taken with a regular camera and then uploaded? Um, one of the other features uh, is going to be allowing you to use the kiosks as an onboarding um, device to push to the cloud. And then same thing with the cloud pushing out. Um, that's an update's coming soon. To answer your question explicitly, you can use a webcam you can use a big fancy Canon Rebel DSLR uh, professional camera. Uh, the biggest constraints are getting a good frame, uh, framing up the individual with the picture. Uh, we don't really recommend selfies uh, because the nature of selfies and you're holding your arm out, your body's contorted. Uh, having someone take these pictures for you, like I said, does not need to be professional. You do not need to go to Amazon and buy a, a big fancy camera. Uh, I used L, the, um, the built-in um, webcam here on my Elite book, reads me every single day, sees my goofy smiley face and accepts me uh, and says, you know, welcome every morning I come in and scan. So uh, you do get the ability to use multiple cameras and devices to take those pictures. Where can a video of the email alert be found? Uh, that should be in the frequently asked questions um, under PMK. Uh, I do know that the marketing team just finished up a bunch of new videos. So, Jackie, just reach out to me in email and I'll put you on um, my list to get that checked. Uh, I believe that is either on the YouTube page or it's under the personnel management kiosk FAQs and video resources. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so I set up a device to be recognized as our management. Like now, start. What are the next settings to start pushing data temperature reading to the portal? Um, so if you've just got the device set up, if you've just purchased the the license and you've got your your credentials. Um, you should have gotten a welcome guide or a startup guide uh, at the bottom of the email below your credentials. Uh, that information is crucial. Um, but getting the device up to date with the most current software uh, is, is step one. We definitely want to get that device up to date because um, a lot of the features, a lot of the settings are not there. Uh, turning on the callback settings and then turning on the device communication settings is essentially the two steps that you need to take from your kiosk to get it associated with the account. Um, if you have any issues with that and you need some help, please open up a help desk ticket and then we can work with you one on one to rectify that issue if you are encountering any problems. All right. Um, that was the last question that I saw. Uh, let's see, it is uh, 434 here on the East Coast. I'm going to give it a few more seconds. Um, a few more seconds here for any any questions to come through. All right, so uh, no more questions have come through. I see some people are... Uh, disconnecting i'll give it another couple of seconds maybe you're typing maybe you're slow to type my dad's slow to type he never he never had a typing class let's see all right we got no more questions uh, all right well you know what guys um 
I think you, every last one of you who join, uh, this is definitely one of our larger webinars um, to date uh, as far as attendance. Uh, if you guys have any further questions, please feel free. If you already have an established relationship with a, with a, with a sales representative here at Meridian um, or a reseller, uh, they're great about getting questions back to us here in the support area. If you have any further questions, if there's anything, if you want to sign up for onboarding, if you're a current customer, uh, please reach out. Uh, we'll be more than happy to take care of you and walk with you uh, on your adventure and getting your PMK set up. So signing off here, uh, Josh, uh, Meridian Kiosk. Wish you a good rest of the afternoon, a great rest of the week. And if you're looking forward to hearing some more information, some feature releases, we will be at the same time, same channel next week. So join in. And again, uh, from deepest and sincerely, thank you guys for joining and being part of this. Uh, we're more than happy to have you uh, as part of the Meridian family and using these PMKs and getting everybody back to school and work and being safe and being healthy. Y'all have a great rest of the day. We'll talk with you later.